Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is angiogenesis, which occurs in chronic inflammation. Okay, so the way we're going to structure this video is we're going to start off with a brief recap of inflammation so far. So we're going to look at the uh, acute inflammatory response and we're going to revise the adaptive immune response. Now we're not going to be able to do them in particularly uh, um, detailed accounts. I'm not going to give particularly detailed accounts of them because they're huge topics in themselves. Um, but I'm just going to briefly summarize what uh, both of them do because they are the basis for chronic inflammation. After all, chronic inflammation follows uh, these earlier phases of inflammation and specifically certain cells that are going to be brought into the interstitial fluid in the um, acute and adaptive immune responses, um, those are um, going to be necessary for us to understand what's going to trigger chronic uh, inflammation and the angiogenesis within chronic inflammation. Right, okay, so let's say uh, we have uh, some pathogen here. Okay, so here is our pathogen, and a pathogen, the word pathogen just means anything which is capable of causing pathology. So it could be a bacterial cell, it could be a virus, it could be a fungal cell, or it could be um, some uh, other type of organism, for instance, a, proto um, a protist, a protozoan potentially, uh, malaria and um, trypanosomiasis, and things like these, these sort of diseases are caused by protozoan um, species. Okay, so it's just a microbe of some form which is going to cause a, an immune response, an inflammatory response. Okay, right, so let's now discuss what the acute inflammatory response is, which is also known as the innate immune response. Okay, but before we do that, we just need to discuss the um, three different types of blood vessel which will be in the interstitial fluid. Uh, near where this microbe has infected. Okay, so the first type is you'll have arterioles. So let's let this be an arteriole here. Okay, now arterioles are tiny little blood vessels. You should not confuse them for arteries. Arteries are the massive great things that you learn uh, the structure of in anatomy. Okay, uh, arterioles are absolutely tiny little blood vessels. They are really microscopic structures. Okay, and I'll discuss their structure. That, well, actually, I'll discuss their structure now. Okay, so what you have in an arteriole is you have a basement membrane. Okay, here. So I'll color this in in the color I'm always going to use for basement membranes, which is turquoise. And sitting on the basement membrane, you'll have endothelial cells, okay? So, to emphasize how small these arterioles are, look at these endothelial cells, okay? So here is an endothelial cell, a single cell. And you can now get a scale of how small these things are. Okay, they're not as small as capillaries will be, and we'll see a capillary in a moment. However, a few cells will make the circumference of this blood vessel easily, okay? So here's three cells so far, and we're nearly round now. Here's a fourth one, and I think I'll go for five. Okay, so let me just straighten this up. Right, so here is the fifth endothelial cell here. So let's give them all nuclei now. So here and here. Right, so that is how small these arterioles are. Five cells will completely make up the circumference of the lumen of this arteriole. So it's a very small little blood vessel. You're not going to be able to fit that many red blood cells in here because each red blood cell is going to be about this size. So you're not going to fit in that many. Okay, so these are tiny, tiny little blood vessels. Now this is not the complete structure of an arteriole. The really important thing we've missed off here which is the arterioles will have smooth muscle cells surrounding them, and I'll draw a single ring of smooth muscle cells. So the smooth muscle cells are arranged in rings like this. You have smooth muscle cells connected to one another, and they'll form a ring around the 
basement membrane of this arteriole. Okay, now what's the significance of this? Well, if you imagine what's going to happen when all of those endothelial cells contract, then all of the lengths of the individual endothelial cells will decrease. Okay, and if the length of each individual, sorry, of each individual smooth muscle cell, these are smooth muscle cells, not endothelial cells. So this is a vascular smooth muscle cell. Okay, so when all of these vascular smooth muscle cells uh, contract, then the length of these vascular smooth muscle cells will decrease, okay? And if you can imagine what will happen if every single vascular smooth muscle cell here decreases in length, then that means that the circumference of this entire ring of vascular smooth muscle cells is going to be reduced, okay? And that means that the diameter of that ring of vascular smooth muscle cells is going to be reduced. So effectively, what it's going to look like is a ring getting a smaller circumference, and you can see that the ring is going to constrict, basically. So these rings of vascular smooth muscle cells which surround uh, the basement membrane, which is here in turquoise, and the basement membrane is mainly constructed out of collagen proteins. Okay, and it's just the support structure that the endothelial cells are sitting on. Okay, so when all of these vascular smooth muscle cells contract, uh, then it's going to cause this ring of vascular smooth muscle cells to constrict, and that will be, um, it will cause the ring within the ring of vascular smooth muscle cells, this basement membrane with the endothelial cells, that will also be forced to constrict. And therefore, the um, size of the lumen within the endothelial cells uh, is going to decrease as well. So the whole blood vessel is going to shrink, basically, and then it will allow less blood to flow through it. Okay, so you're not just going to have one of these rings of vascular smooth muscle cells, you're going to have many of these rings. So you're going to have a little layer of vascular smooth muscle cells around the basement membrane in the case of arterioles. Then what's going to happen is the arteriole is going to split down into smaller blood vessels. Okay, so let me show these. And these are tiny little blood vessels. These are the business end of the microvasculature. And all of the blood vessels we're going to talk about are known as microvasculature. So where should I write that? So these are all microvasculature. The macrovasculature refers to the arteries and veins that you learn about in anatomy, the vena cava, the aorta, the renal artery, the radial artery, all of those um, are arteries and veins like the saphenous vein and things like that. Those are the macrovasculature. The microvasculature are the blood vessels that are within each little tissue. So you'll have arterioles, capillaries, and then post-capillary venules, which we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so these next blood vessels are the capillaries. Okay, now these are tiny little things. These are a single cell thick. So let me now show you what a capillary looks like. Okay, so if we have our endothelial cell here, Okay, and they're so small that one endothelial cell will completely make up the entire circumference of the uh, capillary. So here is this single endothelial cell, and again it will be sitting on a basement membrane. Okay, and it is important to go through this vasculature because after all we are talking about angiogenesis. Okay, so we need to know something about blood vessels to talk about angiogenesis. Right, okay, so these are capillaries. So capillaries, their entire circumference is made up by a single endothelial cell, like so. And they are sitting on the basement membrane. So the basement membrane, again, is holding uh, the endothelial cell in shape, okay? So remember, the endothelial cell is just a gooey mush. Um, it needs to be held in place by something rigid. And that's the basement membrane, basically. Okay? And then this lumen of the capillary here, it's barely big enough to fit one red blood cell in, so it's a single cell thick, basically. So this is a capillary. Okay, now, the other important thing to note is that there is certainly no um, vascular smooth muscle cells around the basement membrane. Now, the capillaries are called the business end of the microvasculature, and the reason for that is because they are where uh, exchange of gases is going to occur. 
Okay, and also nutrients and waste products, so not just gases. So, um, basically the whole point, well, one of the major points of the vascular system is to supply nutrients to um, tissues and also to remove waste products from tissues. So we supply nutrients of which the archetypal two examples are oxygen and glucose and we remove waste products which the archetypal example is carbon dioxide. Okay, so um, that is going to occur at the capillaries. Then what's going to happen is the capillaries are going to reconverge together to make another blood vessel. So here is a bigger blood vessel here Okay, so they've now given away their oxygen and glucose. The blood that's coming back in here has no longer got oxygen or glucose. It's given that away, and it's now got carbon dioxide, so it's deoxygenated blood now. And this big blood vessel here now is a venule. Okay, so now let's discuss the structure of a venule. If you really want to be specific, you would call this a post-capillary venule, because it is the first venule just past the capillaries, okay, because venule kind of covers loads of different sizes of blood vessel. Venule is, you know, there's many different blood vessel sizes that you would call all grouped together as being venules. They're too small to be veins, and they're too big to be capillaries, so they'd all be grouped together as venules. Uh, but this is a post-capillary venule, it's the one that's just after the capillaries, okay. Right, so let's see the structure of this post-capillary venule. Well, basically, I encourage you to think of them just as large capillaries. Okay, so I can't really show it that much bigger than a capillary, but it's a similar size to the arterioles. Okay, so here you have many endothelial cells going around the outside again. So here's one endothelial cell. Here's another one. So the whole circumference is no longer made up of a single cell. So it's certainly bigger than a capillary. But the difference uh, between it and an arteriole is that it's not going to have the vascular smooth muscle cell there. So effectively, that's why I would like you to think of it, I encourage you to think of it as just a big capillary. Many of the capillaries have converged together to make this bigger thing that is, has the same wall structure, basically, as the capillaries. It has endothelial cells, and they're just sitting on a basement membrane, and that's all the post-capillary venule consists of. It's got no more layers other than those two. Okay, so the arteriole is the one that's different, basically. It's got the vascular smooth muscle cell layer uh, outside of the uh, basement membrane. Okay, right, so blood will come in, through arterioles, oxygenated blood will come in through arterioles, it will go through the capillaries, and you'll have many capillaries, okay, and in the capillaries it will give away its oxygen to the tissue, and um, also its glucose, and it will receive waste products such as carbon dioxide, and then it, the blood vessels will reconverge to form a venule, and the venule will be carrying deoxygenated blood. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.